Welcome to the Impact Show. We're in episode two and I'm so excited for a great show lined up for you today. I'm your host, Samantha, and we're bringing you the real raw stories from behind the scenes in business, politics, and leadership to help you go from tragedy to triumph in your business, career, and life. We've taken you behind the mind of a mayor, and today we're taking you behind the mind of a senator. We're here at one of Atlanta's premier clubs at the gathering spot, and I'd like to welcome our amazing guest, Senator Sonia Halpern, Georgia State Senator, recently elected. Welcome, Senator Sonia, to the show. Thank you so much. I am so glad to be here with you today. Thank you for being here. It is a pleasure. You and I have met on a yeah. personal level, and I'm so excited to actually have you here on the show. Uh, one of the first questions I have for you as I'm, as I'm thinking about your run for office, you ran in a runoff campaign. You had a, you had a runoff race, and it was your first time yes. running. And you won your election. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I am so excited to be sitting here as the state senator for Senate District 39 in Georgia. You are right. I was a first time candidate. Mm -hmm. This my election was a special election and it did result in a runoff uh, mm -hmm. and I won. And trust me when I tell you there was no shortage of people <laughs> when I was running to tell me that first time candidates never win. They don't win. So. <laughs> But you did. I did. So when you think about that, when you actually ran for office, mm -hmm. what was your aha moment that said, I'm going to do this? So I had spent a lot of years, decades really, behind the scenes working on other campaigns, mm -hmm. um, predominantly raising money or profile for other strong Democratic candidates. Never did I ever dream of running. I never had a desire actually to be an elect, in an elected office wow. or to be a politician. Mm -hmm. And uh, the work that I had been doing in the volunteer space it, for not-for-profits, working in philanthropy and such, really helped to cement for me the systemic issues that mm -hmm. we have in our communities and as much as we've got organizations that step in and fill the gap these are systemic issues that money alone and philanthropy alone can't solve right so then we get to covid last year in march and when everything kind of started to slow down i started to feel a little restless and really ask myself could I be doing more? And, mm. I, and I didn't have the answer mm -hmm. as to what that more might be. Mm -hmm. But as the pandemic rolled on, it became really obvious uh, how much good public policy makes a difference. Right. And then Congressman Lewis, of course, sadly passed away in mm -hmm. July. Mm -hmm. And Nakima Williams, now Congresswoman Nakima Williams, was my state senator. The mm. moment that she got the nomination from the Democratic Party of the state to become John Lewis's replacement on the ballot in November, that was the moment that I said, I'm running for office. Mm. And I, it kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. And I really, I just, I felt called, activated, motivated to mm -hmm. run. And just like that, I decided that I was going to run. So I really, I listened to that voice yes. and decided to, to go for it. You have to do that, you know, and it, when you talk about that, it makes me think of the, the nonprofit that I'm the executive director for, Ladies Learning to Lead. We really encourage young ladies to mentor others who are doing something that they want to do. So it sounds like a part of your aha moment was seeing someone else actually doing it and seeing someone in that space and saying, OK, you know what? This is a space that I need to be in. Yeah, and I, I mean, I've had the great fortune of being able to, you know, be amongst all kinds of wonderful politicians, right. kind of at the national level, the state mm -hmm. level, the local level. Um, it just wasn't anything that I had dreamed for myself mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. I decided, no, this is what I need to do next, that I have... Mm -hmm. I have gifts that I can apply in this space and I want to I want to use them in this way now. I love that. You don't hear those stories. <laughs> I mean, that's the real when you think of raw behind the scenes stories, you think, oh, it's got to be gory. It's got to be dramatic. 
But yeah. when you hear something like that, that is the real raw truth because a lot of times politicians have these things planned out for That's years. That's right. That's exactly and right. And you don't hear someone say, I never thought of being a politician. Mm -hmm. This is not what I wanted to do. It just, it just kind of fell in my lap. It was purpose for me. Exactly. And, and I think that's where timing is everything. And mm -hmm. so all of the experiences that I have had leading up to that point, I think, in fact, truly prepared me for the ability yes. to do the work that needs to be done and now. Right. And you're doing it. Yes. <laughs> and I'm doing it. So I am. It's true. I am in my first session as a legislator. Yes. We just crossed the halfway point of the session uh, just this week. Wow. In Georgia, we are what's considered a citizen's legislature. So mm -hmm. we are a part time, though this for me is my full time right. obligation um, work wise. And so we have a 40 day session and we just passed day 24. So Wonderful. 40 days sounds short. It feels even shorter <laughs> now that I'm in it. <laughs> yeah. And you're a wife and a mom yes. of three children. You have two boys and a, and a, a, a five year old girl. daughter, yes. gorgeous little girl. You know, I, I, I'm, how do you make all of that work when you think about balancing, uh, the work as a Senator, and your personal life and as a mom and a wife how do you make all of that work i mean it's not it's not without its difficulties especially mm -hmm. now in the beginning my my kids really are used to me being the one to pick them up from school every day mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. that includes my 13 year old who's in seventh grade i mean <laughs> right. i was always the one to do pickup <laughs> and so it has been a definite shift and change but mm -hmm. i think the moment i mean the wonderful thing for me is that the moment that I decided to run, I really have had the support of my family. Mm -hmm. My husband has really stepped up to the plate mm -hmm. and really been encouraging. So everybody's picking up pieces in different ways and and it's good for all of us, right? Right. It, right. If there's something to be said for every single one of the five of us in my family mm -hmm. who are taking on different roles and seeing that we all can shoulder different kinds of responsibilities, and for me, I think that being a mom has, um, it offers me a different lens and perspective mm -hmm. on the work that I'm doing even as a senator. Nice. I like that. And it's really important that your family is involved in what yeah. you're doing because they, they have to have that buy-in too, yes, right? They do. I know you, you have to talk to your citizens and, and the community about when you're campaigning, how you're going to make things work and how you're going to be a great leader. But you also have to sell your family on that. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so that's important. This is true. So I had the, my littlest one and my oldest one, they were out with me on the uh -huh. campaign trail when we were knocking on doors. <laughs> so they did that. And, and my husband, I mean, he, he's really been fantastic. And mm -hmm. they're all very proud that mm -hmm. I am a state senator and that I get to do the work mm -hmm. that I get to do. So everybody's making the space in the room for it. Yeah. And so it's been great even just from the inside my own house perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's great work that you're doing. So it's not too hard to get behind it. Yeah. And when you talk about work, uh, you and I had a conversation the other day about how when we're just in the trenches, right? We're so focused mm -hmm. on the things that we have to do. And we don't think about the tragedies. We just focus on the triumphs. We focus on that win yeah. because we're just so engulfed. And, and at times it's like, what is it that I have to do? Not like what else is going on. So how do you, how do you, how do, when you think about the challenges you faced, right? What is one of the main challenges that you feel like you have overcome? The tragedies that we don't think about when we're in the trenches. But how do you feel like you've overcome one of those challenges and gotten to that win? I mean, there are so many different examples, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think as a woman and then specifically as a black woman, um, oftentimes people don't understand the value that we bring to the project, the organization right. Right. Um, or our thinking. It's very easy to underestimate me, mm -hmm. I find that because I'm, you know, kind of short and petite, <laughs> we people have that over, in common. People underestimate me all the time. <laughs> right. Um, you know, for me, I really am. I'm the person who puts her mm -hmm. head down, gets to work. I focus right. on what needs to be done mm -hmm. and just do it. I have learned to really weed out kind of the naysayers and mm. not focus on that. It's really mm -hmm. easy to let other people stop you from doing things right. that you are 
meant to do and that you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I just, I do, I bear down. Mm -hmm. I just know and trust in myself. There is something to be said, I think, too, for developing kind of authentic and trusting relationships in right. your workspace. Yeah. It's easier said than done. Yes. Um, so for me, one of the things that I've done that I feel has really helped me be able to separate what I'm trying to do from what other people are trying to have me do mm -hmm. is to first steady myself and anchor myself in the most important authentic and trusting right. relationship, which is the one with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if I am being authentic, if yes. I know that I'm putting the right intention and stuff, then that helps me just not, not mm -hmm. get waylaid by other people's comments, mm -hmm. opinions, um, perspective and just stay focused. It's not yes. easy. I mean, the reality is to be in spaces that people don't either welcome you or expect right. you to be in or necessarily want you to be in, it's mm -hmm. not easy. And so... Um, and that's the real raw, behind the scenes thing. I mean, that's the piece that we have to really understand that's there. I love what you said about the, aut the authenticity is getting to know yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Is with yourself first. It is. So if you can decide that you're going to do the things that you want to do mm -hmm. or call to do, decide to do authentically as you, mm -hmm. um, then you're going to be fine. Right. Then you're going to be fine. There's a Toni Morrison quote, and, 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 and I actually go back to this quote often. Mm -hmm. And it is really around understanding and knowing your purpose and mm. owning your own intention. Mm -hmm. um, and sh and then I'm going to have to paraphrase because I'm gonna, okay. I'm going to I'm going to bumble this quote. <laughs> but more or less, right? Uh -huh. When you find yourself in the positions that you have been brilliantly trained for, mm. right? It is our responsibility then, to, if you are free, to free others. If you have yes. power to empower others because right. this is, as she says, this is not a grab bag candy game. Mm. And so mm. when you can also remember that. that it's not about me, mm -hmm. like it really is about, you know, it, when I chaired the board for the National Black Arts Festival as an example, I came to be, I became chair, this is eight years ago, mm -hmm. as the organization was celebrating its 25th anniversary. We had no uh, executive leadership at the time. Mm -hmm. We were $500,000 in debt. Wow. Also happening in the background was this question around, do black fe arts festivals even need Matter. to exist? Mm. The media was asking those questions. Mm -hmm. The community was wondering, is this an investment? We also had a 25th anniversary celebration to plan for that was supposed to start the season in July. It was March and we had no programming. So Talk there were about a lot of reasons to, first of all, there were a lot of reasons to say no. Right. <laughs> I'm Absolutely. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. And I'm yeah. so positive. I'm like, we can do this. But in this story, no, I'm like, no. But I really, I was like, this is too important. And so yeah. I think, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times for me, it really has been tuning into the importance of the thing at hand mm -hmm. and believing in the thing at hand and then just applying myself to it right. and really not thinking about myself, but really thinking about what's the problem, how might I solve it completely outside of myself. Right, right. And you know, we have to do that in the nonprofit world, in yes. the business world. Our show is about business, politics, and leadership. So in every aspect of that, you have to think about how is this going to help others? Yes. And it's not about me, it's, it's about the about mission. Me. That's exactly Whatever right. that cause is that you're, that you're fighting for. That's exactly right. right. That you're pushing for. So you said some things that I just really want to dive into. I wish we had a whole hour <laughs> to talk. <laughs> But I know you, you talked about being a black woman in leadership, mm -hmm. and I know you've worked for Fortune 500 companies mm -hmm. like Walt Disney mm -hmm. and Cox, and, and you have been in high-level positions. I want to talk more about that and emerging leaders and, and current leaders as well, and what you advise 
for them as they're coming up in the ranks and as they're already there, yeah. what are some of the tools that they could use, especially as black women, yeah. right? And leadership and some of the challenges. I want, I want to talk to you more about that. And yeah. we're going to do that right after our break. When we come back, we'll be back again with Senator Sonia Halpern. We'll share your one minute motivational messages throughout the show and they gotta be impactful. So send them in to us and we'll make sure they get on the show. I've listened to a defense attorney tell my client, you let this happen to you. I get very angry when I hear things like that. Holding people accountable for the wrongdoing, you know, that's what we do. We, we make our clients whole, we try to help people get their lives back together. But whenever that is caused by someone who is a predator, I'm not talking about negligence, I'm talking about somebody who just decided they wanted something and took it. They get to deal with me. Wind Productions LLC is taking the coronavirus pandemic seriously. And we are following the necessary safety precautions to keep our clients and staff as safe as possible. When we arrive on site to film your video, everyone on our staff will wear a mask and we will keep them on the entire time. Before we set up the equipment, we sanitize it down to make sure it's clean and germ free. And we also practice social distancing. Make sure you guys contact Wind Productions LLC today to hire us to film your next video. We'll do it safely. We're back with Georgia State Senator Sonia Halpern, who was just talking to us about being a woman in leadership in politics and being a wife and a mom and so many other things that she is so amazingly doing in her life. Senator, I am really interested to learn about some of the roles that you played in the past. You were working for Fortune 500 companies like ESPN, mm -hmm. Walt Disney mm -hmm. and Cox Enterprises and now you're a senator. Mm -hmm. So when you look at both of those, right, those are two areas that are traditionally reserved for men. As a woman in politics now, and as a woman being in the corporate world, how would you say that it's been, to, how, how has it been for you to be able to succeed as a woman? Or is there a difference? Some women say, as a woman, I've just, I've been received the same as men, but you've been in those roles, especially at ESPN, and I'd love to hear more about that. Like, how was it uh, for you to be able to succeed in that type of role in those type of places? Yeah, I, I think it is not always easy to be a woman in traditionally male spaces, right? I mean, mm -hmm. even, even today, in Fortune 500 companies, and this is recent, I mean, this is recent in the last month, there are only two black women who are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Wow. And that's Walgreens and now TIAA. And mm -hmm. so only two, and that's just recent. So mm. we are um, often not given the opportunities to be in those boardrooms. We're often not given those opportunities to be in high level leadership roles. Mm -hmm. um, when I worked at ESPN, I was really starting my career. And mm -hmm. so. Um, I was fortunate enough to come in and they liked me well enough when I was <laughs> interviewing. I did not have some of the experiences that they would wanted me to have to join the advertising sales team. Mm -hmm. And so at ESPN, they actually created an advertising sales training program for me. Nice. So I did a 16 month long program and then um, and rotated throughout the, every division in the company mm -hmm. and then joined the ad sales team and ended up being the only person on that ad sales team who moved to their internet division when they branched off and started a new division with internet ad sales. Wow. Yeah, so that was a lot of years ago. And had I not moved to Atlanta <laughs> and took a job with Google back then, I would be in Silicon Valley today, probably instead of sitting as the uh, state senator for Georgia. I love but, um, it. And I love Google, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I had an opportunity to go there in its early days, literally mm. 23 years ago. But in any case, I think it's not easy to be in those spaces. Right. And as a and woman in those spaces, in those spaces, especially ESPN back then. Yeah. So I think ultimately for me, again, what I, what I have found is that if I can have 
honest dialogue mm -hmm. with the people that I'm working with, mm -hmm. that that helps because I try to stay true to myself. What right. I have not done is try to be the thing that they want me to be mm -hmm. or be the thing that they expect me to be. Um, I think I mentioned earlier about the fact that people people like to underestimate women, and I right, think black right. women even in general. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to me, I have I have really actually turned that into a superpower, mm -hmm. and I use that as the motivation to kind of keep me going and to keep people confused. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. And so I I show up every day, and I show them what I got, and I am honest in my conversations with them. I mm -hmm. don't pretend to be something that I'm not. Right. And people are either going to like it or they're not going to like it. But mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not for me to change me mm -hmm. in order to satisfy somebody else's idea of I what I should it. do. Yes, this is good yeah. stuff. I mean, it is yeah. just, but that's what's worked for me, right? Yeah, right. And I think that it is those honest conversations mm -hmm. that let people know where your boundaries are because I do think that it's easy to feel trapped mm -hmm. because like this is the path that I'm on. Right. And like if I get off of this path, then what? But I, honestly, I have found, and, and so now I find this of myself too, I have found that the most interesting people are the people that are like cats with nine lives. Mm. And they used to do this, <laughs> and then they moved into that. Mm -hmm. And all of the things don't seem like they track well together. Mm -hmm. But at the end, with a, with a rear view window, right, like you see exactly how one thing leads to the next, leads to the next, leads right. to the next. Exactly. And so that's kind of how I have, you know, my, what my career has been marked by from kind of all that work in corporate spaces mm -hmm. and then moving into more non nonprofit spaces mm -hmm. and then some entrepreneurial efforts and now in politics. politics. It seems disparate, but you can really chart your own course mm -hmm. and do the things that you're meant to do and, and do them with an honesty, most importantly for yourself. Yes, I love that. And that's great advice for women, especially young girls. Um, you and I both have a passion for women and young girls. What would you say is one of the things that you would tell a young lady or a woman like myself who may one day consider mm -hmm. running for office? What, what would be your advice? So my advice would be to do it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons why people will tell you not to, mm -hmm. but I think it's about, it is truly about the journey and not the destination. Right, right. And so I mentioned before that, you know, there was no shortage of people to tell me that first time candidates usually lose, mm -hmm. right? But that, and that's, that's meant to stop you, right? That's mm. meant to keep you from going forward with the thing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It is about the destination. So do the things that you want to do. Um, I would say anybody who wants to run for office, you know, understand the role that you're running for. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have the support of the people in your life that you need that support from. Um, and then do it if that's what you want to do. And whether you win or lose, and I know it's easy for me to say because I won, you but won. <laughs> whether you win or lose, mm -hmm. there is so much value yes. in the experience. Yeah. And even in my campaign, there were, there were multiple times in my campaign that I literally turned to friends or my husband and said, you know, even if I don't win, like this experience has been so meaningful to right. me. Right. So meaningful to me. And part of it has been, part of it in the campaigning piece has been the honesty of people, the, the kind of stories that people are willing to share with you that mm -hmm. are deeply personal stories that mm -hmm. are inspiring and that really help ground me now as a senator in terms right. of some of the work that I want to do mm -hmm. legislatively. Um, in terms of just the kindness of strangers who, who meet you and believe in mm -hmm, you and mm -hmm. want to volunteer for your campaign. Right. I mean, there is so much negativity in the world right now also, just generally. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's easy to only see the bad in people. And just for me, like even just campaigning really showed me so much around the goodness of people. Right that it was a great experience. Had I not mm -hmm. won, it still would have been a great experience. So I say, figure out the things that you need to do to mm -hmm. run, 
and then do it if that's what you want to do. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. Because what you don't want is to regret or wonder. Like the what ifs, mm. the what, playing the what if game later in life. Yeah. There's no like value I could have been that. there. I could have yeah. done that. And you yeah. have everything you need to right. have done it, but you didn't. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it speaks to that authenticity mm -hmm. you spoke about earlier, being authentic with yourself. When you and I first met, when you were on the campaign trail, yeah. I was like, gosh, she's amazing. <laughs> she's so real. She's relatable. She's authentic. But going back to what you said earlier, that starts within. Yeah. And you have to have that. And so when you have that, then other people see, see that. It. And I think when you talk about, um, I have not run for office, but you know, I've worked on campaigns. Yes. And so I understand the, the lay of the land. And I feel like that authenticity, authenticity has to be there. It has to be there within yourself first before you can put it out to everybody else and expect them to buy into your it's true your platform plus, plus everybody's going to want different things from you right, right? And, right. and so and so mm -hmm. if you understand the things that drive you mm. then you then you can you know cut your path on that i love that there's there's yeah. always going to be other people's priorities right, right? And you've got to balance that, and it's hard to do if you're not centered in yourself. Yeah, and stay honestly. focused on your path and your yeah. priority. So I'm curious, when we talk about the political climate and women running for office and, and young women considering running for office, when you look at today's political climate, what are your thoughts on what's happening and what's been happening? I think that we are living in a time of hyper partisanship. Mm. And so everybody is entrenched in their own camps mm -hmm. and unable to figure out how to work together so that we can actually get to solutions for people. And this is not a new problem. We have seen it nationally for, mm -hmm. I would argue, 12 years now. Mm -hmm. I would argue from nearly the moment President Obama got into office we've seen that entrenchment that says we're going to make sure that he is a failed president and mm -hmm. that he couldn't get done nearly as much as he might have tried to get done mm -hmm. because there wasn't a willingness to work with him mm -hmm. um, and we saw that for his eight years and then in the last four years with um, trump you know we've seen you know that kind of we're ramming through the things that we want only and mm -hmm. not even listening to and trying to figure out how to work with Democrats. Mm. And so it's it's a problem because there are lots of things that need to be solved and government can be good. Government can be a good tool towards good policy, mm -hmm. which is part of what drove me to it. Right. Um, but not if you are sitting entrenched in your own camps and not willing to come to the table mm -hmm. and have conversations that are real conversations. And I, from the moment I started my sales career, like in sales, sales 101 is find the win-win. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be able to sit down, figure it out, find some common ground, right. and start there and get that done at least. Because the all or nothing, I think, um, I just think that lots of people lose if it's got to be all or nothing. Exactly, yeah, and that's what politics should be all about. You're working, again, like we said earlier, toward that mission. So you all are focused on serving the people in the best way you know how yeah, that's right. instead of focusing on your own agenda. That's right. But as we know in politics, that, that's kind of inevitable. And, and it's okay, right? I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the thing is there was a time in politics where, where we could disagree about the way to get to the goal, mm. but that we at least had the same goals, right? That we at mm -hmm. least understood the problems mm -hmm. and could identify the problems and discuss them together. And as we're Democrats and, Re and Republicans, right. that's right. And we're professional enough to be able to work through, through that, that and get to that. That's like exactly you said right. earlier, you're a fixer. So you focus on fixing the problem. And if we're all focused on fixing the problem, then the best thing to do is work together, together. so we could get to that. Well, if I have the answer is A and you have the answer is B, how can we work together to get to, to C? That's exactly, to make that happen. Right. Because ultimately we are here to serve the people. And so we've got to do just that. Just that, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, as we close out the show, I have one more question for you. 
What is your favorite restaurant in Atlanta? So I, I actually, I don't go out nearly as much as I would like to because I've got those three kids. Right, um, but your husband is in the restaurant he is, industry. Yes, mm -hmm. and so I, I, a lot of times we will go to KR Steak Bar, which KR is our steak bar. neighborhood kind of a, of a, of a restaurant. They've okay. got a great menu, they've got a great bar. It's, it's nice, so I will say KR Steak Bar. Great, <laughs> great, I'll have to check it out. Join me for our next show as I host etiquette guru, model, and TV personality, Sabrina Samuels, taking us behind the scenes in her gorgeous Atlanta home, sharing how she became majorly successful by simply changing her mindset. Ladies Learning to Lead gives girls a competitive advantage. Ladies Learning to Lead offers a host of programs for young ladies, including STEM leadership, career mentoring, various financial and wellness workshops, and an annual leadership conference that prepares young ladies for college, careers, and life. This conference teaches us that we are more than what people say we are. We are more than what society says we are. Have people ooing and eyeing about your video. Contact Win Productions LLC today to wow your clients with the perfect drone footage.